today to do a session of live coding for a new components in the uh, interface x project so i'm sorry screen this is the interface x project it's a project to rapidly build search experiences so we have uh, several packages in here most of them are utilities to the main package uh, which is the x components and this package is about uh, front-end components to uh, show different behaviors and build the UIs for such experience. And today, we want to accomplish this, this task, which is uh, create a new component for history queries. Uh, first of all, what are history queries? So this is a search experience based on, on its components. You can see here when you start search, that we are offering nest queries or popular searches, but let's focus on what we are doing today. History queries are these, so anything uh, we look here for, when the user accepts the query and we come back to the, this predictive layer, the history queries are showing the previous searches that the user does. So the thing here is that these history queries are filtered by the current query. So if I uh, write here sandal, uh, in this experience, we are not showing the history queries when we have a query. But in that case, we, uh, we would be only showing the history query sandal and not t-shirt. And we want to do a new component showing all the history where it's uh, not the last two or five one, all of them in a new model. And for that, we need to this list not be uh, filtered by the current query. It's a not so difficult task and is what we are going to do today. And for that, I'm going to stop sharing and leave uh, Javi who is uh, going to lead this uh, programming today. So, Javi, whenever you want, you're in command. Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Javi, and I'm a front-end developer at Empathy in the X team. And today I'm going to show you how we build several, how we build our components. So as Gerardo said, uh, we're going to write to create a new history component that will show all the previous searches without filtering them, like we currently do with our uh, history of queries component. To do that, the first thing uh, is to explain you how we have structured our project. We have divided the X components project into several modules, each one with its own responsibility. We have um, a module for the search input, which is the search box, which contains other components like a button for clearing the search input or a button for uh, forcing a search. We have different modules for different kinds of suggestions, like could be the related tags, the queries, or um, popular searches. And we have as well the history of queries module. Uh, where we are going to add a new component. This module uh, stores the history queries in each user device. The history queries, the searches queries, never leave the user device because we like, we like, to, we like to enforce privacy. Um, so first of all, we are going to create a new view component. Let's call it my history. And there we go. We use TypeScript in this project, so I'm going to get rid of this uh, boilerplate code. I'm going to add now with TypeScript to the script tag and uh, to define the, a class component. So for that, uh, I'm going to explore the default class with the name my history, which will extend from 
Bien. Now I have to import uh, all of these new um, utilities. Uh, view as well. Okay. Now we have already a component that will render a list of suggestions. For us, history queries are another kind of uh, suggestions, like the popular searches or, or the next queries that I uh, was talking before. Uh, that component is named base suggestions. And basically it just renders uh, a list of suggestions, a URL element with uh, several uh, LI elements. Um, to render these elements, we have to pass a list of suggestions using a prop named suggestions. We can also optionally pass uh, it an animation if we want these elements to be animated when they appear or when they move, when they change its order. We can also uh, pass a prop to set the maximum number of items that are going to be rendered. For example, if you have a, um, a list of 10 popular searches, maybe you just want to render the first five. So uh, this prop will help you doing that. Uh, I think that's everyone, everything from this component. So uh, going back to my history, how do we retrieve the uh, previous searches and list? We have created using TypeScript uh, several decorators uh, to access the VX uh, state, which is where the um, previous searches are stored. Um, apart from the local story of the browser, obviously. So to do so, we just have to add a decorator called state, which will access. Let me first import this, and it will access the histories queries module. And then we have to uh, tell the property uh, that it should retrieve the history queries from which I believe must be called a uh, history query. Again, uh, we define the property. So um, it is a list of uh, suggestion. And we have to add uh, this TypeScript operator, well, I have to call this public because of how uh, TypeScript does the inference here. Um, and we also need to add this operator because we are, no, we, we are using the TypeScript as strict mode and we are not initializing here this property. So we are basically with this operator telling TypeScript, hey, trust me, this is going to be defined. Uh, there is no, not going to be any null or undefined values here. Okay, uh, oops, this important thing wrong. Uh, okay, the table was history. You can import the history. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ivan. Well, he's Ivan, <laughs> our current team lead. Nice guy. <laughs> um, okay. We have the history queries imported. So now we just have to use them. Again, we remember uh, we have here a prop called suggestions. It receives a list of suggestions. Fortunately, um, a history query uh, is a kind of suggestion. Uh, so we just have to do suggestions. Uh, History queries. Now, if I go uh, back to the browser, oops. Uh, 
And if I search, I have prepared here a view which will render the history queries. So if I search something, let's say, um, I don't know, Bebo, and I remove the query. He's in the history queries component, our current history queries component is um, re rendering the Lego suggestion. Now uh, I'm going to import the component we just created, my history. Um, you see, and if everything went fine, we should see the list of uh, suggestions. Well, actually we are not seeing that because we are not telling how each one of these suggestions should be rendered. Um, to do that, we have to use the default slot here, which will provide us each one of the suggestions. So we don't have to write this v4 loop in every component. Okay, so again, using the default slot, we can retrieve, oops, each one of the uh, items, which are in the suggestion property. And here we could just do a, oops again, suggestion query. Let me format this code. I think ESLint is complaining because of the attributes order, yeah. And you can see the browser just updated. I'm seeing again the, the Lego, like, just like the other um, component. I think here is that if I search and I type Lego, well, because of the uh, both queries are matching, the first component, the history queries component, this one is removing the, the query because it already matches the, the query. If I search something else like, I don't know, play mobile maybe, there uh, you can see that it is appearing in both of the of the components. Now, this is very basic. This is just a list of queries, which would be helpful to just inform the user um, what have they searched in the past. Uh, but we're going to go one step further. Um, let's add some interactivity to it, similar to what the history queries component does. Um, to do so, I'm going to import the history query component and use it. Basically, what this component does is uh, having a button that uh, usually renders the, the given query, the suggestion query, and when click it, it will uh, do a search of that query. It also has uh, usually a button to remove that entry from the previous searches um, list. So user always has control of the data that uh, they have stored in his device, right? So how do we use this component? Similar to the list one, we have to use a prop named uh, suggestion to uh, pass the query, the history query to this component. So it knows what data it has to render. So I'm going to get rid this line that we just have written. I'm going to import um, history query and I'm going to pass uh, to it the suggestion. Okay. And oops, I forgot. Uh, Okay, obviously we have some naming collision here. So I'm going to name this uh, component. Um, with that, it should be fixed. Right, now we have a very similar component to the previous um, history queries component. The difference is that um, a history queries component, our current history queries component retrieves the list of queries from a getter that filters these queries 
uh, using the currently write the written query. But this uh, my history component retrieves from the state directly. So this list of history queries are not filtered by by the current query. So as we were testing before, if I type le, le well, actually it's already added. It's really fast, and uh, you can see that the history queries component is filtering, but the new my history component is not filtering the, the queries. Then if I click any one of these queries, like Playmobil, we are searching for, for Playmobil. It already updates the search input with that query. Then if I click this little cross button, I can remove queries and both components updates immediately. So now, what do we usually do here? Um, in every project that we do, we have, let's say, pretty complex customization uh, requirements. So we love to use um, view slots. Uh, so we are able to change everything in our components, every single part of our components. So, in this case, base suggestions and history query components already have its own slots. The only thing we have to do here is propagate these slots. So a user of the my history component can uh, doesn't have to rewrite this code. Only has to think about um, the content that it should be rendered. Maybe he or she wants to add an icon or some kind of decoration to these components. So first thing, let's check how the history queries slots are named. And seems like we have a default slot that will allow us to render um, any content that we want inside the button, inside this button that is wrapping the, each one of the queries. Instead of using the history query, you can create just the slot and using the history query from outside. What do you mean by? Instead of using history correctly here, hmm. you put a slot with the default content and then use the history query from the from the home view. Okay, you went, went yeah, you went one step further. Then. Yeah, I got it. Mm. We're using all the mm. no, no, but not using the history query because the history not query as is, default. No, the default we, will be the query and maybe the, the time. Okay. Of the query. Yeah. The Ivan is right. One of the um, cool things about the, the approach that he's suggesting is that we are not including the history query component by by default. So if any user of this library uh, wants to get rid of uh, write, write it on code uh, using this component. The history query component won't be included in the in the bundle, in the final JavaScript file. Okay. So <laughs> doing this, we have to modify our uh, demo view. Uh, and the code that we have just removed from the from the other side. Which is just importing the component we remove it and passing uh, propagating the suggestion data. Uh, I believe this was called suggestion. Uh, suggestion. And if we okay, we already passed the suggestion here, so this should still be working. Yeah. Okay. This was one, whatever. I'm going to get rid of it. 
and it keeps working. With that, we are already rendering the full list uh, of suggestions and we have achieved highly customizability of this component. We can render whatever we, we want here. So we can use this history query component or maybe we can you know, import some icons or whatever we want and, and render. Once we have the component, what we have to do is test it. Testing is an important part of our project. Indeed, we, we test every single thing we, we add or every single bug we, we fix. So let's do this. Let's create a test file for the My History component. For tests, we, uh, we usually use YEST um, for unit and component test. And for end-to-end, -end, we use Cypress. And I said we usually use YEST because we have started introducing Cypress component testing for some of the components that rely too much on browser APIs like scrolling or different painting APIs. Here in the unit test, what we like to do is create is use a pattern that we call the render factories, which basically means creating a function that will render the my history component, and it will return some uh, API to help us um, write tests in a more clear way. To this, component, to this function, we are going to pass uh, several options like props, slots, even the templates sometimes if we need so. So I'm going to write it. And let's create these types. Okay. Um, the first thing we have to do here is to um, import a utility that we call uh, install explaining. And uh, the first thing you have to do if you want to use the X components in your project is install a view plugin. And this utility is what it does. It creates a, um, a new view constructor uh, without anything and it installs uh, this plugin on, on top of it. So let's call it. Uh -huh. And here we could put several options, but we are not going to need them. And if I remember correctly, uh, the second parameter of this return was the local view. Yeah, we are construct. All right, now, so we, we have to render this component using view test utils. So let's import the month function. And okay, <laughs> sometimes Western import doesn't work. So let's import it manually again. Uh, Is it maybe with, yeah, it's an scoped package. Right. Um, then to this function, we have to uh, pass the component that we are going to render um, several options like props that we don't have or slots. Uh, okay, let's import my history. And this is going to return a testing wrapper, which has several uh, utility methods to change the props, to uh, dispatch events, or to retrieve the emitted events, maybe, uh, even to check the rendered HTML, 
different kind of very nice uh, utilities for testing. So this is one of the things that we are going to return from this function. So we test can have access to the uh, testing wrapper. Let's just call it wrapper. Uh, I believe this the type of this was a wrapper. Yeah, wrapper of uh, view. Okay, and the import seems to be not working once again. So let's just add it manually. Okay, so we have the basic approach here. Uh, let's return the wrapper as I just said. And uh, yeah, with this, we can start writing our first test. So by default, what it has to do this component is has to render a list of uh, queries, right? So let's write that specification. Uh, uh, and how are we going to, to write this test? Well, we can retrieve this wrapper, the first thing. Uh, let's uh, extract it here and use the function that we have just created. Okay. We are not going to use the options yet. Uh, Okay, right. Uh, we're in a unit test, so how are we going to emit, uh, how are we going to let the application know that um, the user has searched something? We could maybe mock the the access store with some data, but we are going to use our internal event system. Um, to do so, every component should have available an X property uh, with a method called emit that we can use to emit the same events that uh, our search input does. So in that case, we're going to use the user accepted a query event and we're going to um, write a random query like the ones we were using previously. Um, once we have that, we are going to check that the my history component is rendering that uh, Lego query that we just faked uh, its search. And to do so, we are going to refactor this code in a couple of seconds. Those who don't worry, we can just check uh, that the wrapper is uh, rendering an element with the, the Lego text by default, which is what it does, right? So the base suggestions component should already have uh, something to help us, which is this data test attribute. We like to use data test attributes so we can decouple the classes from our test. Um, for classes we use, well, you can see that we use the BEM naming system uh, and we want them to evolve freely. So maybe tomorrow we change completely our naming and we don't want to rewrite our test. That's why we write these data test selectors. So what we have to do is selecting the first suggestion item and because there should be only one and assert that the render text is the same one than the search query. So we can use the find all method, uh, which will receive a CSS query. And we can use another helper method that we have to help us write this data text selector, which is get data test selector. Um, 
select the every suggestion item. Oops. Uh, um, here in this suggestions property, let's call it better, maybe suggestions wrappers, we should have a, a wrapper for each one of these render suggestions. So the first thing that we can do is assert that it has a length of just one. And then we can add another assertion for the first element. We yeah. that it has the same uh, search text, right? Mm. So here we should have a text method. And we can come set that it should render the text there. Like. Um, uh, with that, I believe this test is going to fail because uh, view works asynchronously. And as we are modifying reactive properties, we have to wait for um, view to be able to re-render again all, the, all these changes. Let's run it to assert that it fails. Uh, okay, what is it complaining about? Oh, okay, I'm missing parentheses. The render function, you have to use the local view. In the oh, right, right. Option. Good catch. Okay. Uh, yeah. As Ivan was saying, I forgot to use this local view, which has installed the, the explain. Uh, now that you said that, I think that I also forgot to use the module inside the component. So one thing we have to do when we write components in for a given module is import the module inside the component. So we have here uh, to our use a mixing um, that is called X components mixing and use the history queries uh, X module. Um, okay, I forgot to write one call as usually. And now if we go back to the test, uh, we can <laughs> run it again and it should fail because it's not, uh, we are not giving time to view for re-render. Okay, right. It is complaining because, well, we are expecting to have at least uh, one suggestion item and it's uh, returning zero. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, so we are going to return. Uh, well, actually, we don't have to return. Anything. We can just do here, uh, transform this test function into an async function. One really nice thing about yes is that it supports uh, test string async uh, code really easily just by transforming your code into an async function and then you can uh, await any call any promise that you have in, inside of the test so once we meet this we can just do here em next tip And if, if everything went fine, now the test, the test should be working. 
Uh, there it goes. As easy as that, we are uh, we have written our first test for this component. Now, ESLint is complaining because uh, we have very strict rules and we want to we have to add a describe block telling what we are testing. In this case, we describe. Uh, yeah, we can just say we are here testing my visual component. And um, we move all this code into this block. Okay, right. So what would be going one step further? What another test that we can write? Maybe we can test that we can use the um, default slot to render anything that we want. So let's do that. And here is with this uh, render function it starts uh, shining. In Butes Utils has some methods to add to work with the slots, but honestly, I don't like them very much. I find them confusing <laughs> a little bit. So let's just uh, allow any user of this function to render anything that they want. Let's add a template prop that is an string. This string would, would represent any HTML uh, that we want to render, like this, for example. Okay. Um, let's oops, let's use that template here. And uh, assign it a default value of what we are going to render, which is just a uh, plain my history component. Okay. Uh, yeah, good cut. We want we don't want to have to pass this uh, template in every test, so we are going to just set it to to optional. Um, then we have to modify this uh, mounting process. So now we are going to create a new component on the fly, which will render this template, which will have the my history component register. Uh, and actually that, that's it. Now we probably have to set as well these my history options to optional. So let's just uh, add a default value of an empty object. Let's run the test once again to assert that I didn't drop anything. Perfect, it keeps working. So let's start writing the second test. And while we write it, we are, we are going to realize that we are probably going to have to extract this code to a helper method, okay? So it's, uh, let's say it's close. Let's say change uh, content for each uh, previous set. And what we are going to do here is just passing a custom template with anything, any content that we want. Um, so again, like above, let's say const wrapper equal render my history. But in this case, we are going to write a custom template. Um, now we have to use the my, oops, my history. Um, if you remember, we added a default slot. So we're going to use it here. And we're going to keep each, of, each one of the suggestions. 
as the use of the index. Yeah, that's what we and I is think to add. Uh, to do that, well, the first thing that they have to do is uh, pick it from the base suggestions component and also export it here. Once we have a long um, set of um, parameters, of properties that we want to propagate, we can simply do uh, use the vbind directive. So the code remains a little less verbose. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and pick also the index. Um, oops, let me see how this is formatted. This is formatted very weirdly. Okay. Uh, um, Let's say we want to, I don't know, maybe we can add uh, the index and the suggestion. Yeah, just the, in, just the index and the suggestion, concatenate. So, suggestion query and uh, let's say yes. Now, uh, we're going to do basically the same uh, like we're doing uh, above, but we don't want to just do this because that would be a bad decision. <laughs> so we are going to extract this logic that we have written into several helper methods, which is the great advantage of using this render and uh, render component patterns. So I um, think we can extract this to a method that is we can call maybe search. So which will receive shift a query. And we can simply do search query. Actually, because we're using TypeScript again and in a strict mode, we have to type this in the interface that we created below. So we can do search. And this will be a function. We know this parameter, which will receive some query and will uh, and won't return anything. Okay. Uh, okay. Now it's working. Let's modify this uh, here below and do and, do, and use the function that we have just created. So search. Um, Level. Um, let's do the same below. The first thing that we have to do is search something. Let's pick it again from here. Uh, one nice thing that we can do, as usually when you are going to search something, you may want to wait for a view to re render. So oops. let's move also this next tick function to uh, to the to the search function that we are creating. So let's transform it into a sync function, and now it will, as it is an async function, it will return a promise with no with no value. Okay. Uh, uh, well, actually, we can write this much simpler. We can just do our weights are um, not uh, transform it into an async function. Here, and wait, search level, and we can do the same uh, below. Okay, and the next thing that we need to do is to retrieve the list of items once again. Uh, so we can pick this code and transform it into another utility function. Okay, so let's copy it. Let's say get list items and let's just return the code that we have just copied. Like, like before, 
we have to add another function here, mm, items. And in this case, it's going to return a uh, wrapper array, if I remember correctly, of the uh, view items. Oh, yeah. Actually, as I said previously, uh, this function don't, don't, doesn't have any this type associated, so they they can be written this way. Okay. Let me just import this. Uh, sometimes I, I don't know why sometimes it allows me to auto import and sometimes it does not. Uh, well, let's just do it manually. And... Okay. So now we can just if again this function here I say get list items and keep the code written in the same way. Actually, we can now remove this wrapper and leave just these two parameters used. We run it. And probably it's going to complain because I, I haven't typed the I haven't set this function to be assigned yet. Uh, okay, let's run it again to ensure that we haven't broke anything. Okay, it works. And now we can do the same uh, below. So, okay. we have to put this function. And uh, like in the testable, we can just write spec, say student wrapper to have length. Oops. Okay. Uh, one. And uh, another test to ensure that we are actually rendering suggestions using this, this shape. Uh, sorry, wait, not text. We equal uh, level. Uh, okay, Leo, yeah, Leo dash and zero because it's the first index. And uh, I'll remove this wrapper from here. On, if we run the test, let's see if it works. And it does. So <laughs> I think with that can be enough. Uh, hope you liked it and you could learn <laughs> a little on how we write components, how we write tests, and different utilities we use. So thank everyone for watching and Gerardo. Do you want to say anything? Yeah, thank you very much, Javi, for the lesson. And um, we will try to um, keep coming here in Twitch to do some live coding, uh, maybe big weekly. We have to decide that. But maybe we continue doing this My History component uh, with you. So stay tuned and see you soon. And uh, that's all. Bye bye.